everyone. Welcome to the Space Camp Office Hours. My name is Kimberly from 37 Signals. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. If you're joining us live, say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're from. We have customers all over the world who use Space Camp, so we always like to know who is joining us live. So today's session is all about the Base Camp way, meaning how we, the team that makes Base Camp, actually uses Base Camp. So we're in the product every single day. So today we're going to walk you through exactly how we use that. So thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us live. Like I said, my name is Kimberly, and I make some of our tutorial videos that you'll find on our Base Camp help site. And we'll actually drop that in the chat where you can find some of those educational videos. You also might know me as the host of the Rework podcast. If you don't follow that, we would love for you to follow that as well. It is with our founders, Jason Freed and David Heinemeyer Hansen. Ashley has dropped that in the chat as well. So I am going to be joined by two of my colleagues from the customer support team. But before we do that, I want to walk you through a little bit about what we're going to be going through today. So first, here at Basecamp and at 37 Signals, we use projects in Basecamp in basically three different ways. The first is company-wide projects, and those are projects that everyone in the entire company is a part of. We have things like our 37 Signals HQ pro project and the What Works project. We'll be walking you through those specific projects today. We also have projects like people operations for HR documents and that sort of thing, and also a project called Out where people just put their vacation schedule. So those are kind of the company-wide projects that everyone uses here at the company. Then we also have some ongoing projects. So those might be things like team projects or department projects like marketing or the ops team, even customer support will have their own projects. So we'll kind of show you what that looks like. And then we also have projects by product. So Basecamp versus Hay versus Campfire each have their own separate projects as well. And then we also have some fun projects just for social and then personal projects as well. So I know almost all of us have a project that we are on just by ourselves, completely private, so we can do our own documentation before we maybe share something publicly. And then the third way that we use projects is for temporary projects. So projects that have a start and an end date, that might be cycle work or product updates. Um, we do a meetup twice a year that gets its own project, but then it obviously is archived once the meetup is over, customer outreach initiatives, and any special projects we call kind of temporary projects because they start and end and then they get archived. So we'll be going through those kind of three types of projects with you today so you can see how we use those here at 37 Signals. And then we're also going to walk through today how we use some of the different base camp tools, things like the message board with kickoffs and heartbeats for our product feature updates automatic check-ins, how we use those across the company, not only for status updates, but for social reasons as well. To-do lists and hill charts, we use those very frequently in Basecamp, so we'll walk you through some of that. Card table, our QA team, on-call teams, a lot of temporary projects also use those card tables, so we'll show you a little bit about how that works. We frequently use templates, and then we'll also share some other tips with you. So all those things we'll be sharing with you guys today. Okay, now, before I bring out my colleagues, I do want to tell you just a little bit about what we won't be covering, and that's going into detail about how to use each of the Basecamp tools. If you're brand new to Basecamp, if you've never seen it, I'd suggest you check out one of our Basecamp 101 classes, and um, we'll drop that in the link. Oh, I see here you might have a little lag. If there's a lag, you might try refreshing your screen. That sometimes helps things get, get back in order. Okay, um, you'll also have a chance to answer ask us specific questions that we can answer. So a few housekeeping things before I bring my colleagues out. You guys look like you found the chat. On the right side of your screen, you'll see a couple of icons. The one at the very top is the chat. So definitely use that if you wanna chat with each other or give us any kind of feedback as we're presenting today. Right below that, you'll see a question mark. That is the Q&A section. So we will have a chance to answer some questions throughout the session and as well at the end. So if you have a question, make sure you post it in that question section. You also can upvote someone else's question. So if someone else has written something in that you're like, oh, that's a good one. I want to make sure they get to it. Definitely upvote it so we can see it and it'll get our attention. And then the next icon you'll see is a poll, which I've just posted live, which is tell us about your base camp use. We're just curious before we get started. Are you an expert using it five plus years or more? 
one to five years? Are you a newbie, meaning less than a year? Or are you not using Basecamp yet and you're just trying to get a sneak peek into how we use it here? So go ahead and fill that out. Again, that's the third little icon down. Let us know. And um, that'll help us as we're presenting today. Okay. I think that's all of my notes. Oh, one last thing. The session will be recorded. So if there's anything you need to go back to that we've said today, or if you want to share it with someone else, the link that you came to watch is the same link where the recording will live just a few minutes after we're done here today. Okay. With that, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Ashley, on the customer support team. Ashley, hello. Tell us hey, about you. Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm on the customer success. Um, actually, I'm only the only customer success specialist at Basecamp, um, but I'm on the support team. I've been here for almost eight years, and um, today my voice is not exactly here, so I will primarily be in the chat with you, checking out all the questions in the q and I will also share it twice. Um, if you have any questions and want to talk about anything specifically, you could reach out to guides at Basecamp.com. We'll drop that there in just a moment. Um, but kind of taking the reins here for us will be Chase. I will uh, bring him up on stage in just a moment here. Chase is the head of the support team, and I'll let him tell you a little bit more about what he does on a day-to-day -day basis and his tenure. Hey, folks. Yeah, I'm Chase. I'm a head of support team here at Basecamp. Been here since way back in uh, 2011. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be walking you through how we use Basecamp today um, and kind of what I've seen over the last decade working both on product side of things, and also some of the more, like Kimberly said, the more uh, social team aspects of things. Amazing. Well, thank you, Ashley. I know you're sad to not be with us full time. We'll have her in the back so she can rest her voice. She'll also be in the chat with us and helping answer questions. So mm -hmm. with that, Chase, I'm going to have you share your screen with us so we can walk through some of the ways that we use the product, Basecamp, at 37 Signals. And I think the first thing is maybe the HQ, um, yeah. 37 Signals HQ that every employee is on, if you want to start there. Yeah. So, you know, here's my homepage inside Basecamp, right? A couple of different ways, like Kimberly mentioned, that we're using it. Some of it being personal, some of it being corporate, company-wide, right? And that's what the HQ is here for. So this HQ is going to hold all of our company announcements, any things that we need to get out to everyone all in one spot. Right. And that's really the beauty of Basecamp. We want things all in one spot. So people aren't having to go to Dropbox for some files or drive to their email for other things. It's just all going to be in Basecamp. You can see here we've got a message board that we've renamed to post. And we use this for things like promotions, right? Uh, we've got several people that got bumped up and, and received promotions lately. Here's a good one. Jorge has been promoted to principal programmer. So David went ahead and shared that news. The cool thing I love about doing it this way is it's not just locked off in an email somewhere. You get to see all of these congrats and huzzas and, and everything else that comes in using the boost tool down here. You also see that some folks want to write out more of a comment, right? So Scott and Jay both like just, again, celebrated uh, Jorge's uh, achievement here, shared how they worked with him a little bit. Um, so really good for these kind of big uh, announcements that need to go out company-wide like that. We're also using it to store files that everyone needs, right? Docs and files, so some of our HR documents are in there, uh, things that we might need access to, but we don't want to go and bug our uh, people ops folks like Andrea and Bethany. We are a fully remote team, so we're using Campfire over here as a virtual water cooler, for instance. Not a lot going on today, but there was a lot yesterday about one of Kimberly and I's favorite conversations, which is food, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so we were talking about, uh, of course, Chicago pizza and all the fun that, that happened there. And you'll see two And other... what I love about this, oh, I'm ch sorry, Chase, is that campfire is really casual conversation, just like you would have if you were in an office. Yeah. So we use it in that way. And again, lots of boost, right? Like people underestimate boost sometimes, but they can be really just like this perfect little boost of, of emotion into uh, the, the written text that you're seeing. Uh, outside of those, we've also got two other tools enabled in this one. And notice that we're not using the full set of tools for this HQ, right? There's not a card table. There's not a to-do set up. Like these are the only five tools that we're using right here. Um, we've got the schedule over here for different uh, big events. In this case, uh, High Rise's anniversary is the one coming up next. 
Uh, we also use it to keep track of different uh, work anniversaries and birthdays and things like that for other people on the team. And then probably one of my favorite tools inside of Basecamp that we're using is going to be automatic check-ins. Uh, we use a variety of them, but here in the HQ, this is the big one. What did you do this weekend? Again, this is one of those where like if we were in an office, we would ask this, you know, every Monday morning, essentially. Like, hey, how was your weekend? Did you do anything exciting or interesting? Uh, and I love Michelle's in this case because Michelle travels all over the world. One of the perks of being remote, of course. And she shares all those adventures back with us. So here she's talking about some adventures in Turkey and Spain and Japan, Indonesia, Vancouver. And she's sharing these pictures throughout. So we get to uh, follow along, essentially, um, this, this journey that she's having while still working for us, which is just really, really cool. Uh, again, like when we get down to the bottom of this specific check-in answer, lots and lots of boosts that are coming in for people that are just kind of, again, stunned by some of the photos that uh, she shared with us. Um, yeah. Michelle, and it, those check-ins are always the best. <laughs> they really are, really are the best. Uh, yeah, and so I mentioned there's there's two other types of check-ins too that we use. So this is just in the HQ, right? This is, everybody has access to this. Um, everybody's able to, to see things in here. The two other check-ins that we really like to use, I'm gonna move over to a, a different project right here. Um, we have projects set up called What Works. Uh, at our size, there's about 80 of us in the company. For us, it made sense to have a separate project for the check-ins and heartbeats and kickoffs that I'm about to show you. This is one of those that for a long time, for a decade, really, uh, from when I first joined Basecamp, we kept all these inside of the HQ as well. So for smaller teams, if you're new to Basecamp especially, you can probably put all this in the HQ, really, if you wanted. So inside this What Works project, this is going to be from last year, there are a couple of check-ins that we use. The first one is, what will you be working on this week? That one goes out every Monday morning at 9 a.m. and allows people on that team, in this case product, to share what they're going to be working on this week. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and show you the support one right here. So every Monday at 9 a.m., our team goes through and lays out what they plan to be working on. Uh, a little bit lighter since this one was around the holidays, right? But we're able to get a real good sense of what Jones focused on this week, what Robert's focused on this week, what Haas is focused on this week. And the cool thing is we're going to learn kind of the plan for the week for these folks without having to drag them into a, a like a stand-up meeting or a status check-in or, or anything like that, right? They're going to add this asynchronously on their own time. I'm going to read it and consume it and digest it asynchronously on my own time. And uh, yeah, you're going to save a lot of time just sharing what you're working on. So Chase, everyone is getting this message Monday morning, 9 a.m. And it is a requirement for everyone to re respond to it. So I will just say mm -hmm. that we had some questions like, how do I get my team to actually do this? For us, it's part of our company policy that you answer what you're going to be working on this week. And then the second question everyone gets similar, what did you work on? Yeah, what if you worked on this week goes out every, uh, this one says every Friday for the support team. That's actually changed. It's every, uh, every day. Um, this is going to be an opportunity to share what folks have been working on. Some folks do it day by day. Some folks answer every couple of days. And it's also a variety of ways that it's answered. So in this case, Robert is sharing, you know, kind of longer text style, paragraph style of everything that he's worked on and sharing some links to different things and, and that. Joan's doing the same thing, except for now she's mixing in some different bullets for specific uh, customers that she's worked with right through here. This is a free form answer, right? Everyone's gonna answer in the way that they uh, thinks best to share that information out. And I think this is one of the things that really sets uh, our team apart, you know, Basecamp apart from uh, other teams that we've all worked for before. Like we are very intentional about what Jorge calls radiating information, right? The best way to work, the best way to make sure your team is kept in the loop on things is to radiate information back out into these projects and into these spaces like automatic check-ins. So I highly recommend, even if you don't have any other uh, check-in set up, these two right here, what will you be working on this week, every Monday at 9 a.m., 
what have you worked on every weekday at 4.30, like right before people leave for the day, use those two and you're going to save so much time. You're going to like eliminate that whole stand up, you know, huddle or whatever that a lot of other companies are doing every day. So Chase, when someone registered, they asked what automatic check-in do you think is the most beneficial for the team? Would you say this combination of the two is probably the most beneficial or is there another one that you think is yeah. important? So I think they're, you know, for me, my personal love is the uh, show us a picture of your pet, <laughs> which is great. You know, you can see uh, uh, just a variety of pictures of people's dogs, cats, birds, all the rest of it. It's really fun. But as far as they work with, yeah, this combo right here, uh, you really can't do one without the other. This is a, a yin and a yang. You've got to have both of these working in conjunction. Um, set these two up, let them run, let your team answer them. And you're going to just, you're going to have your your finger on the pulse, on the heartbeat of what your company is doing every week. And you, you get to do it all asynchronously. That's the best part. Okay. Since we're on automatic check-ins, I'm going to interrupt you one more time because someone yeah. else asked, how do you encourage sincere participation in automatic check-ins? I kind of mentioned that they're required, yeah. but then they said, I require the check-ins, but some people just give me a single word or phrase while others give in-depth descriptions. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think one of the um, the big things is you've got to show what you want, right? So this is a top-down thing. If you are not doing the work and putting out and radiating that information, right, other people on your team are not going to follow your lead on that. So I think that's part of it. I think the other part is holding up and celebrating the people that do. Uh, one of the best check-in uh, authors, I guess is what we would call them, on our team is Rosa. Uh, and her check-ins are a <laughs> master class in laying out what she was working on, but also the whys and the hows and the, the intricacies that she's involved in. Like, yes, you're doing it to keep in the loop this week, right? But you're also doing it for all the future employees that you're going to hire because they're going to refer back to these for history, for uh, ideas, for when they need to look at why something is done the right way. Uh, and you're also doing it for that historical record. There have been so many times where I've run into a case where it's like, man, I haven't seen this in forever. I wonder if like somebody put it in a check-in somewhere. You use the Basecamp search tool, you filter down by check-ins, and then bam, there's the answer from like two years ago. So having that in Basecamp, like just the value of it, I think is a big push. But like Kimberly said, you, you've got to you've got to make it a requirement. You've got to go into your team and say, this is the expectation for these check-ins. And I will also add that our founders, Jason Freed and David Heinemeyer Hansen, also do those check-ins. So mm -hmm. they are doing it as well. So it yeah. really kind of starts from the top, if that is helpful at all, that they're telling us like, this is what they plan on working on this week. And then they check in throughout the week and say, this is what I've done today. And this is what I've done the last couple of days, which I think definitely sets the precedent that like, you yeah. can't slack when it's coming from the top and everyone is doing it. So I don't know if that's helpful at all, but yeah. thanks for the question. Okay, so we've talked through automatic check-ins. Mm -hmm. That is on the What Works project. Let's go back to What Works. Show me what else is on there because we do have message board kickoffs and mm -hmm. heartbeats. People might not know what those are, but tell me about those, Jace. Yeah, so with all of our work, we're working in cycles, right? A cycle for us lasts anywhere from uh, six, it's typically six weeks and then a, a two-week cooldown period after that. Now with these, each cycle starts with a kickoff. That way we know exactly what a team is working on. And then we round it out with a heartbeat. That way we know what people have worked on, essentially. So let's take a look at those. We'll start with our kickoff one right here. Um, I'll show you our support kickoff again, because a lot of times, like if you've read Shape Up, you kind of know, um, you know, kind of how product kickoffs go. A lot of times we get questions around like, well, how do other teams use it, right? Like how does commercial or support or finance or people ops, like how are they doing it, right? So here is our support cycle six kickoff. This is the one from the last cycle of last year. We go through and detail out, we've got uh, folks working on community, right? Marissa Haas and, and Robert. This is what they're, they're gonna be working on in community for this cycle. We also have a group that does uh, updates, both for uh, internal docs and uh, external customer facing docs, right? And this is what they're gonna be working on. Here's some of the projects that Ashley and Dana and Jane are all doing for guides and outreach. We just go through and list kind of what our plan is for that cycle. Now on the support side, a lot of our work is just what we call ongoing work, 
right? So this is going to be answering emails, talking with customers, holding classes, doing calls and research and uh, office hours like this. So we go ahead and list that out too. Ops is the same way. Ops, uh, their team has a fundamental mission, mission of what we call keeping the lights on, right? That's a lot of ongoing work. And that's how we, we phrase it. We just end that particular kickoff with keeping the lights on essentially for ops. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people ask questions about this, how to work in cycles mm -hmm. for these other types of departments. And I've always said that it just feels very helpful to regardless if you have just ongoing yeah. work, you're still setting some goals over that six yeah. week period and kind of laying out, even though we're going to do ongoing work, these are some highlights of things that we're either going to work on or goals that we have, things that we're trying to accomplish within this set fixed period of time. Yeah, exactly. And at the end of that fixed period of time, that's when we're going to kind of reflect for a minute and go, what did we actually accomplish in the cycle? Uh, here's a good one from support again. So remember, we laid everything out that we were going to be talking about, be working on for that cycle. And we came back and said, look, this is how the cycle went in community. This is how the cycle went with well, community made a lot of stuff. So you can see they had a, a lot of work there. Um, here's how the cycle went as far as our internal and external customer docs and what was new and what was improved. Um, it's just a really good, like a, a check-in, right? But for the team. And again, this is done asynchronously. Like we post these up for the company to read on their time. Kickoffs at the beginning of the cycle, heartbeats at the end of the cycle. And it again, it's going to give you that pulse of the company. It's going to tell you what was planned and then how did that plan go, essentially. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And Chase, you mentioned this in the beginning, but um, we use what works as a separate project. It could be rolled into your HQ if you wanted to. And also what we do, this is 2023 because we wanted you to see the heartbeats and the kickoffs yeah. both through a cycle, but we do a new what works every year. Mm -hmm. So there is a new what works 2024 project. It's not as filled out as this one is. So that's why we wanted to walk you through this one. But Every year it gets a new refresh with kickoffs, heartbeats, the same base camp tools within each project. And those just get archived at the end of the year. Yeah, archived. That way, again, you can go back and look and say, okay, this is kind of what this team did three years ago for cycle five. And while we're talking about kind of this what works project, someone has asked, are the daily check-ins just for support or everyone? The answer is everyone. That goes for kickoffs and heartbeats as well, even though we're showing you a lot of support documents. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that we we can show you. Uh, it is for everyone. So everyone in the company gets the Monday morning message. What are you going to be working on? And then the daily, what have you worked on? That's for everyone from marketing to ops, to support, to product, developers, programmers, everyone gets that. The requirements are everyone fills out the, what are you going to be doing this week? And then even though you're getting that daily check-in every day at 430, the requirement is at least two times a week. So two times at minimum. And a lot of people summarize, like, this is what I've done the last couple of days um, as opposed to doing it actually daily. Yeah. Okay. I feel good about this. What works project. Right. Um, let's maybe go to a cycle project or how we use projects that are not just ongoing forever, like 37 signals and what works. Got it. Yeah. So we're going to kind of mosey our way into this through the lineup up here. This is one of those where, again, if you're not using the lineup, it, it really helps us see a bird's eye view of these different projects that are in flight. We're also using the markers in here to start uh, to show cycle starts and cycle ends. Uh, remember that Tuesday green line is always gonna, that today line is always going to be green and in the middle there. So you can kind of see how things are, are lining up. Uh, this cycle, we had a bunch of smaller projects that are going on. Uh, and we're going to show you this one, uh, a feature that we've been working on right now, creating templates from projects. I should just as an addendum up front on this one, right? Just because you see this project in progress does not mean it's actually going to ship. That's the decision that we make at the end of the cycle, right? So once this get gets to the end, we make a call on shipping or not. Um, so yeah, don't get too excited. I have been part of projects before where we were really, really excited. And then you get to the end, it's like, nope, no, we're, we're not going to ship that. <laughs> So let's take a look here, right? You'll notice a couple of things in action, especially if you've read Shape Up or have been following any of uh, any of Kimberly's other videos or uh, the Rework podcast or whatnot. 
when we scroll down and actually look at what tools this project is using, notice it's not all of them. It's just a set combination in here. On the Basecamp side, message board, to-dos, chat, or table. And then we're using two doors down here. Notice the message board is really spare, right? There's only two people really involved in this project, the, the designer and the developer here. So the message board is really probably only going to be used for the kickoff here. Uh, we've already done the shaping work. It's already been to the bedding table. Now we're in the uh, kicking off the project stage. So Brian basically uh, takes what he's written up and shares it as a kickoff for this particular project just to get things started. From there, and you can see we're using the, the project details up here at the top to kind of tell who's who on this, right? Andy's on design, Jeff's on programming. It's getting a full cycle's worth of work from us, so a full six weeks. So once we've got the kickoff in place, Jeff and Andy are start, going to start using those to-dos to lay things out. Uh, notice we've got the hill chart up here at the top. If you've never used a hill chart before, basically uh, to-do lists fall on one of two sides of the hill. They're either on the left side where we're figuring things out, or they're on the right side where we are making them happy. Happy. <laughs> making <laughs> them making happy. happy. We are making them happy <laughs> by finishing that. <laughs> um, we're going to go back in time and kind of start here, back on January 26th with this project, right? Jeff started. He's got two different to-do lists that have been created, two different scopes is the way that we think about them, uh, copying details and template construction. He has manually put those in those particular spaces on this hill chart. We're going to talk about the manual thing in just a second. Notice as the uh, project progresses, we get two more to-do lists that come into play here. A lot of them are over on that making it happy and happen side. <laughs> so we're, we're looking good there. And then as of an update from uh, last Friday, about a week ago, everything is wrapped up and, and looking good uh, so far on this particular project. The hill charts are really important for us here because one, it's showing where a project really stands. Again, these are manually set by Jeff. These are intentionally manual, right? There's no... AI trying to figure out where the progress, uh, where the project stands. There's no bot. There's no uh, how many to-dos did you check off. This is Jeff going in and saying, hey, as of uh, you know this particular day, this is where we are. This is my update, right? So this, uh, this update down here that he has shared with us. Jeff has told us where this project stands. And we get to go and look at that hill chart and see at a glance where it is. We're towards the end of the project, right? So if we saw a bunch of to-do lists on the left side of this hill, we might be a little bit worried about that, right? But Jeff has given us this update saying, hey, we're looking good and uh, everything's flowing like it should be. If you're not using hill charts, I absolutely recommend them. This is a really good way to get a good look really quick at, hey, where's the project at, essentially? I have to say, I know Ashley is a huge fan of hill charts. I was never really a fan until I really started using them. And now yeah. I'm a super fan of them as well. Yeah. I think kind of on that, what have you been working on and what have you worked on? I think hill charts helps you really take the time to think about how things are going yeah. because it's intentionally manual, because you have to decide where along this mm -hmm. plot is this going. I think it really helps you think through kind of your process and where you are with things. Yeah. And you know, look, with these to-dos down through here, like this is a good list right here, existing issues. This tells us that there are two of seven completed, which is a nice number, right? Lots of other apps out there give you that number, essentially. But we know those to-dos aren't created equal. Each of those five remaining ones might take a day. They might take five days. They might take a week, right? So that's why when it comes to these, like, yeah, we'll give you that number of like, you know, two out of seven completed. But the real story of where the project at that's going to be up here in the hill charts. That's where you're going to find that information because, again, it is that intentionally manual update here. Awesome. I don't know if that project in particular, oh, it does. I was going to say, I don't know if that one has a needle as well since we're talking about progress. <laughs> it does. It does. It this does. is the, the other thing, right? So, uh, again, these are small teams, right? There's just Andy and, and Jeff that are working on this one, right? So when we want to, again, radiate that information out, one way is those hill charts, right? If we want to look at where the actual work is, we're going to use the hill chart for that. Sometimes, especially like if you're Brian, our product strategy guy, like he's looking over a bunch of different projects at, at once. He just wants to know if it's on track or not. He doesn't need to know the nitty gritty details unless, he, unless they pull him in on it. 
And that's where this needle up at the top comes into play. So it's going to tell us how far along we are and if we are on track or not. Now, this one's looking good, right? Green across the board, we're on track. This latest update shows us we're pretty close to the finish line over here, right? So maybe like a little tick away, maybe two ticks away. We're also getting that, that text update from Jeff again right here. He says things are on track. We're feature complete. Again, remember, that doesn't mean we're shipping here, right? That means that we are feature complete and ready to look at it from a QA perspective and then decide on shipping or not. The, again, the cool thing with Basecamp is we're going to keep all of this in the history. So you can see Andy made the update before that. Here's where uh, things stood. And he gives us a nice update right through here, right? Um, going back even further, like think, thankfully, this is a good project to show folks because it stayed on track the whole time <laughs> on this one. Um, but that needle does have the option if we needed to. So, you know, say, for instance, all of a sudden something happened and there was some risk here. We're going to, you know, show that with a, a yellow highlight here. If we're concerned, we're going to show it with a red and explain why. Explain why we choose this. Explain why we move the needle here and shows how uh, this particular project is going, essentially. Now, uh, these all needle. bubble up, which is really helpful, right? So Mission Control has the all the needles down through there, so you can look at a quick glance where it is. Um, Kimberly, do you use it a bunch? Like I actually was yeah. going to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was going to yeah. say, I actually use Move the Needle to check in on projects where my yeah. work will start once a feature is complete. Yeah. So for example, this is a perfect example of a project, one that I just pop into it occasionally, or I'll look at it in Mission Control, like, where are they? Because when they're done, it's when I need to start putting together a video and explaining it and yep. the follow-up work that I do on the product side. And it's easy for me to see instead of being up to date with every single comment in the project, yep. I can literally just look at the needle and be like, okay, they're, they're almost done. I need to almost start my work. Yeah. Joan on our support team is the same way. She uh, works on the documentation side of, of new features and things. So she's just looking for like you that once we get over into this stage, that's when we know we need that uh, she needs to start paying attention to the project. Uh, some folks like me, I really love the nitty gritty. So like I'm following it <laughs> from start to finish. <laughs> You know, but that's the beauty of the needle. It lets you pick and choose where you want to focus at, essentially. Amazing. Okay, so this is a great cycle project example. And we basically have mostly the same tools in each of these product mm -hmm. projects. The chat yeah. just for the team that's working on that project. And then mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the doors that I see there. Yeah, so we've got two different doors set up here. And again, think of doors as you're literally opening a door to another service, another site, another page somewhere on the internet, right? In this case, we're using a GitHub door just to link off to the pull request where this particular feature is sitting. And then another door for uh, one of our beta uh, environments. So a way for us to quickly get over to a beta and test this particular feature. Uh, I can never remember the URLs for our betas, like at all in any way. So having that there is a nice big button that I just click. Oh, it's, it's the best. It saves me so much time. Amazing. And I love, um, it's kind of a relatively new feature that you can add a new logo to a door as yeah. well. So it makes it very easy to identify. That is GitHub without a doubt. <laughs> and then card table, also relatively new-ish to Basecamp 4. I see a card table labeled QA. Tell us how that is used. And then we can talk about some other ways we, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting Ashley's frog in the throat. Other ways we use the card table within other projects. Yeah, so this is one of the bigger questions that we get all the time, right, is you're using to do's, but you're using cards at the same time, like, how does that work? And the first thing to remember here is that, yeah, you can use any combination that you want when it comes to these tools. You can use all of them, you can use none of them, you can use a couple here or there. For us, to do's, we think of them as uh, kind of yes, no, on, off switches, right? A to-do is either done or not done. There's no stages of work to it. There's no phases that a to-do moves through. A to-do is, hey, Kimberly, is that done? If it's done, check it off, mark it complete, right? Cards, on the other hand, these are individual pieces of work that are moving through stages. So QA is a really good example here. When uh, Michael and Gabriel are going through and, uh, testing out this particular feature. Any bugs that they find will come in as a new card right up here that starts in triage. Once uh, a programmer or designer picks it up, it moves into in progress right through here. 
And then once that is actually fixed, it moves over to QA2 confirmed fix. So we're going to look at this card in particular. Uh, Gabriel added this one in. We're using that notes section to lay out what the bug is along with screenshots, in this case, a video, which is even more helpful, right? And then we're using the comment thread right through here to actually keep track of each individual piece of conversation that's happening here. So Jeff and Gabriel go back and forth a little bit, and then he moves it QA to convict, uh, to convict, to fix. Man, some of my words today. <laughs> um, and then once he, uh, once he confirms it's fixed, then we can move on essentially. So yeah, like you've got this piece of work that is just not like, it's hard to track a bug in a to-do. Like we did it for a long time before cards were, were created essentially, but cards were created because we kept running into this problem of being needing to track a piece of work through different stages like this. Yeah, and that question comes up a lot. When do I use to-dos? When do I use card table? I mean, we could argue either way for lots of different use cases, but I think we look at it as, as Chase mentioned, if it's done or not done, makes sense for a to-do. If yep. it goes through stages, like anything that is progressive work yep. really makes sense in a card table because you can track each phase of the progression and easily see it visually. Yep. I know I use card table for the podcast that we produce because it has many stages. We're scheduling it, we're recording it, we're editing mm -hmm. it, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that kind of goes through a flow makes yeah. a lot of sense for card table. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, those are, that's it, right? This is everything for this project. All in one pay, play, all on one pay, play. Okay, we're gonna all try in one that page. again. It's all in all, one place and it's all, all in one, one place, page. All in one page, right? And just there for you whenever you need it. That That's the yeah. big thing. Like, Think about trying to run this project in any other setup and you're going to have like emails flowing back and forth. You're going to have like GitHub stuff going on. You're going to have to do's in some other tool. You're going to have chat in a completely separate tool and like trying to link all of these together and tell where a project is at and what work is happening. is just near impossible. So having yeah. them in that one spot here in Basecamp, this is like, if you want the secret magic to product development or just running projects the Basecamp way, this is it. It being in one place with the right combination of tools. And all of our product feature projects typically have a card table for the QA team, but then yep. we have other teams that use the card table as well. Like our on-call team has an ongoing kind of bug board, if you will. So yep. if anyone on support gets a call that it might be a bug, it's like they're filing a card, just dropping a card in that card table. Mm -hmm. And then whoever's on call all the time can pick it up. Or if it, you know, a new on-call team starts, they can see the entire history in one place. Yep. Oh, look at that. The on-call card right the there. The on-call card table right there. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see like the cards are moving through a couple of different columns set up for this case, right? Sometimes we need to wait on an external or internal processes. Sometimes we're waiting on customers, essentially. But same kind of flow here. Card comes in, card is handled, and then card has moved to uh, done at the end of the day. Perfect. Now, Chase, the one thing I wanted to make sure that we covered before we just open it up for questions is templates. I know yeah. at Basecamp, we do a lot of similar projects, like we're talking about product feature. Every time there's a new product feature, a new mm -hmm. project is created, but it's similar. <laughs> so we use project yeah. templates for that, kind of talk us through that, and then we can do to-do list templates as well. Yeah, so you'll see we've got a lot of different project templates through here, right? So sometimes it's a QA test plan, sometimes it's responding to an incident, sometimes it's hiring or the, the product development like Kimberly was talking about. One of the ones that we use a ton is going to be onboarding, right? So when you hire a new person, we'll come down here and, and look at this support this template perfect, right Perfect, because people have asked about this. How do we right? onboard new people? The answer right. is with a template. Through a template right here. And you can see we've got like different templates set up because again, we don't want to have to do all this like all the time, right? So new programmer onboarding, new ops onboarding, like those are right down through here. So we can take a look at them, right? On support, the steps that we flow through, I'll just pull up the to-dos here, are a couple of different things. We have things that we need to do before a new hire actually starts, right? Uh, announce it to the staff, post a welcome message, get them set up in the system, that kind of fun stuff, right? And then after that, we start laying out, here's your, like here's the new hires to do's for week one. Here's the stuff that we gotta do for week one. 
Here's the training that we're going to do on week one, week two, week three. Can you imagine having to type all this out again? <laughs> like, no. Every time. Uh, every time, right? Uh, and notice like through these, not only are we adding these things in, we're also assigning them out to specific people, right? So these are, this one's assigned out to Bethany. Here's one for Matt, for Andrea, for Bethany and Andrea again, since they're our people ops folks. Um, that way we don't have to go in and figure out like who's the key person to assign this to every time. It's set right there in the template, which is just, it's a big time saver and it makes sure that you don't miss something that is important in that onboarding flow. Chase, um, while you're talking about all these to-dos, I'm gonna grab this question, which is, I really wanna know how the Basecamp team navigates assigning and checking off to do. Some of that we're doing in a template if there's some yep. of the same people that are always assigned a task, but you'll also see some tasks that are unassigned. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are self-selecting, they're grabbing tasks for themselves as well. Yeah, exactly. So one of these right here, right? Like this manager section, like it might be a different person with each new hire. So we're not assigning that out to a specific person. That's going to be when that manager goes in and starts up a new project, they're going to self-assign these out to themselves, essentially. Um, the thing that I would say about to-dos, like just the best practice tip here, right? When you're when you're adding in to-dos, try your best to make sure it's got a due date on it. Try your best to make sure somebody's assigned to it right off the, the bat. If you do that, that to-do is not going to get missed. It's not going to get dropped in the, in the cracks or anything like that, right? Um, so if you're not really diligent about the self selecting self-assigning like we are with our smaller teams, right? Uh, just go ahead and assign it out to somebody, give it a due date, even if that changes down the road. There's no penalty for that. Like, it's fine. Just assign it out to whoever should be doing it next, essentially. Perfect. So yeah, lots of onboarding questions. And we're also going to drop, Ashley, if you'll drop in the chat, we did an office hours session very similar to this, but with our people ops team. So Bethany and recruiting and Andrea and HR, and they really walked through their entire onboarding process. So it is mm -hmm. available on a replay. So if you have onboarding questions and how we handle that specifically, check that out. Um, thank you, Ashley has dropped that YouTube link and you can watch it literally from beginning to end with the two of them going through all of that from an HR perspective. Nice. Now let's do a little uh, inception, inception here for just a second, <laughs> right? Here's to-do list templates. Uh, these are ones that, you know, maybe it's not a full project you're doing over and over every time. You just need like to-dos, like list essentially. Uh, we're going to show you, this is the, the to-do template for every office hours that we do, right? So on each office hours that, uh, that we host, we take this to-do list template, we put it in the project, and notice that again, like a lot of these are signed out. Kimberly is doing a lot of the work. Ashley's doing a lot of the work. But there's some of them that they're just going to self-select between themselves. The big key here is we're not redoing all this work. Basecamp wants to be able to save you that time. So being able to put all of this in one to-do list template right off the rip and then use it over and over, it's just it's just going to save you a lot of time. So yeah, that's. I just wanted to make sure we had our little inception moment there and show like, hey, yeah. look, we are planning office hours using an office hours base camp to do less. Absolutely. And so for us, we have one project about office hours, but then we spin up a new to do list within that one project. Yep. So this particular base camp way session is not its own project. It's just a to do list within a larger project. Yep. So however it makes sense for you to organize, it could have been its own project if we wanted it to. For us, it just makes sense to just have ongoing to do lists for each of the sessions. With that, I'm going to open it up for Q&A. We have a couple that are already in the Q&A section. If you have any other questions for us, pop them there. We have just about 10 minutes or so left. So we do have some time for some questions. Actually, Chase, I'm going to start with this one because I don't know the answer to it. I don't know if you do. Oh, thanks. Why is it called What Works? Is there a reason that it's named that? I mean, it's been named that forever. It has been named that forever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of like just part of the like part of the, the history of 37 signals, like we, for a long time, our uh, HQ, um, the chat in there, instead of it being called campfire, like it is now, we just called it all talk. Mm -hmm. um, because that's where everybody talks, essentially. Um, so some of that has just been lost to time. You know, it's, it's we bring these things forward. And I'm sure if you like, if you ask Jason or David next time on rework, they would be Oh, like, I call it what works because of x. Yeah, I think someone just made it up. And it's stuck. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay, a question from Jake. You mentioned Brian on product strategy. He's our head of product. Mm -hmm. Curious about his roles as it relates to these tools and with Basecamp. I actually report to Brian yep. on the product team and know that for the product feature work, Brian is the one who's not only writing the pitches and going to figure out with our leadership which features we're going to work on, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. also is writing the kickoff message Yep. first to the entire company at the beginning of the cycle saying like these, this is what we're going to work on in this six weeks. Here are all the products we're going to work on. Here are all the feature updates we're going to make. And here is a two person team that is going to be assigned to that feature that is in that kickoff message for the start of the cycle. Mm -hmm. He then is also posting a message in each specific base camp project, yep. explaining the details behind the feature because the product programmer, excuse me, the programmer and the designer who are working on that feature haven't been involved throughout the process. Yeah. So they're learning about that update or that feature request or update that's being made in that kickoff message. So Brian is doing all of that work, writing all of those, and then also creating each of the projects from a template for each of those programmer designer teams. Jake, I hope that answered your question. Chase, did I miss anything? Really? Yeah. I think the other thing I would say is that, look, we've got multiple products going on, right? Like there is uh, our campfire app that just launched over at once.com. You have our email service uh, over at hey, hey.com. You've got Basecamp 4, that's an active development. And a lot of times, you know, when we talk about uh, top level product decisions, it's Jason, David, and Brian that are having those conversations. And they're at the betting table, they're looking at what's available, they're looking at the ideas, the pitches through there, and then they're going from there. And yeah, like, you know, David might have some pitches about campfire. Jason might have some pitches about, hey, uh, a lot of that development work has taken Jason and David that way. So Brian has been focused on Basecamp lately, Basecamp 4, and what new things that we want to get in there and shaping those ideas, uh, essentially. So yeah, Brian's one of those, he's involved from like start to finish on the product side. It's the, the ideas that are coming out uh, that are making it to the bedding table that are then picked up for the cycle that then he's announcing about, then he's you know, doing the write-ups at the end, like it's, he's, he's keeping that, that picture of the product itself uh, in his head moving. Okay. This is a programmer question. We can kind of answer it. <laughs> How many programmers would review the code in a two-person team? Other programs would have to chip in to review the code. I'm guessing the same for design work. Um, yeah, they are two-person yeah. teams, but they're also looking at each other's work Yeah, across these two-person teams. Also QA is looking at their work. Yeah. Chase, you jump in. No, that's 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 a pretty good way to look at it. It's going to be one of those where, uh, so the example earlier with Jeff, right? Jeff's working on that feature. Once he gets that pull request ready to be looked at by another programmer, he, you know, just throws it up and says, hey, can anyone look at this, essentially? And somebody that has time to look through it quickly and, and kind of give their ideas on it, um, they'll do that in the pull request, and then we'll go from there. Uh, you've also got QA that's looking for bugs and testing it back and forth. You've also, remember, we've got that beta set up, right? So not only is the designer using it on that beta day in and day out, Brian is in there using it on the beta day in and day out, trying to find the edges and the, the bugs and things like that. Uh, so yeah, even on a two-person team, like when we do a code review, uh, it's not this big multi-week link thing. It's literally Jeff saying, hey, can one of you guys uh, take a look at this and tell me what you think? Excellent. Um, Jake, I saw your comment. I am on product. I've also been on marketing and on success. So I kind of, I, I go across a lot of departments with the work that I do. I think yep. I just needed a place to put me that makes sense. But yes, I, I, I work very cross-functionally here at 37 Signals. I mean, we're a small team, yeah. kind of do it all. Um, Chase, before, I don't know that you can share your screen to show mission control. I don't know if there's things that you can't uh, share if you want to look. Hold on, let me look at that real quick. Before you do it, but Margaret had a question. How do you all use mission control? Who uses it the most and how often are they usually checking it? I, yeah. while Chase, while you look, I, I will say, I think mission control is a request that we've had from customers who want to see multiple projects and how the status all in one place. I think that is one of the features built for customers more so than built for us. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's one of those where, I mean, it started out that way, right? But I find that it's also really, really helpful just for us mm -hmm. internally. Um, 
it's one of those where you know you're you're kind of taking this feedback that's coming up from customers, whether it's emails and future requests and the uh, the research interviews that we do, all that, and kind of bringing this together. And I think. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to use this one a lot. And it turns out I actually do, which is cool. Um, so I'm going to show our mission control again with the caveat here, right? Just because <laughs> you see something here does not mean it's shipping. We'll, we'll just leave that blanket caveat out there. Um, but yeah, with us, a lot of these are, are looking good, right? So the customer success office hours, we were just talk, talking about that, right? Um, this is another cycle project that's being worked on. Here's another one. Like these are getting close. They're all on track, which matches up, right? We've only got a, mm, maybe like 10 days left, eight days left in the, in the cycle. So this is what we want to see that everything is nearing the end and everything is green across the board, essentially, uh, with each, each of these again, like we can click into it and see that particular update, right? So if I want to look at kind of how things are progressing, I can get back to it really, really easily. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what our mission control looks like. And remember, this is, you don't have to do all of the projects, right? This is mix and match again. Like some of your projects will need uh, to, to track on the needle. Some of them won't. For example, the podcast project, I don't have mission control or the move the needle turned on because it's never really done. <laughs> You know, it's an ongoing project. There's yeah. a new episode every single week. I would be moving that needle like it's going, you know, it doesn't make sense for that kind of project. For, for yeah. something that has a beginning mm -hmm. and an end, I think it makes a lot of sense. 100%. Okay. I think the last question, uh, Jake, we, I think we kind of answered this. Is it a policy change to automatic check-ins from being multiple times a week from just the end of the week? Ashley kind of answered that as well. Her policy is you have to answer it at least twice a week. Some people do it every day. Yeah. Some people do it twice a week. It just kind of depends on what you have going on. I find I try to do it two or three times a week. Otherwise it just gets, it's too much to try yeah. to explain. I think so every team is, uh, every company is going to be a little bit different here, right? So like maybe there are teams out there uh, like I've worked with nonprofits before who they just don't have a lot of daily things going on, like a weekly, like a once a week on Friday, is a great way to check in, essentially. For us, the pace that, that we move across the teams, I found it, like for me anyways, a good kind of um, barometer, I guess, a, a good model, whatever you want to call it, is uh, midweek, so usually on Wednesdays, and then end of the week on Fridays. Like splitting it up into two like that gives me a way of thinking about the week, almost like to tie it back into to the needle here. It's like, all right, I'm midweek on Wednesday. Here's what my check-in is. Like, am I on track for what I laid out in my Monday morning? Uh, what am I going to be working on? Or like, is things slipping somewhere? So I guess cadence is going to be different for everybody, right? But for us, we're kind of settled into this like, you know, two to three times a week. And since automatic check-ins have come up, I think it's probably the one tool that we use the most <laughs> within the product and is probably the most helpful. I will say what we also do is kind of a standard practice is we link to other projects in our automatic check-in. So we're often explaining, I worked on X, Y, or Z and linking to that project or to that document or that message or comment. So if anyone who's reading it wants more information, it's just a click away. Mm -hmm. um, most of our projects are all access. So clicking on a link in someone's automatic check-in will automatically give them access to that project. It won't be closed to them. Um, so that's another one of those kind of base camp standards or 37 signal standards is keeping yep. those projects where people can poke into them if they should choose to. Yeah. Well, with that, we don't have any more questions. So we are going to wrap it up. Um, Ashley, come on back, my friend who can't talk to us. Hi. Thanks for dropping those links in the chat. I'm also going to put up on the screen, if you have any further questions that we did not get to, this is the place to go. You can email guides at basecamp.com. You will get to Ashley and other people on the support team who can help you out. If you have a question specifically about Basecamp or how we use Basecamp, that is the place to go. Yeah. Like I said, this is recorded. It will be on the link that you came to to join today in just a few minutes. That recording will be there if you needed to reference anything or send it to someone else. Chase, Ashley, thank you. Thank you for those of us who joined live. We appreciate you. If you're a Basecamp customer, thank you. If you are interested in Basecamp, basecamp.com, we'll get you a free trial. Thanks so much. You guys have a great day.
Bye, everyone.